Hey there everybody, this is Kevin from happycoding.io and tonight I want to work on a little project that's inspired by the, the Mars rover Perseverance and so if you haven't been following it you can you can read all about it uh, apparently it uh, launched last year and, and has just landed a few days ago on Mars uh, which is which is totally awesome and if you haven't seen the video of of it landing and then the the NASA scientists uh, cheering, I, I highly recommend watching that. It's it's uh, it like restores my faith in humanity just a little bit. Um, it's it's really great. Um, but anyway, I wanted to kind of dive into it without rambling too much. But one of the really cool things, one of the many really cool things about this um, this project, and I guess about NASA in general is that a lot of what they discover is like freely available and so i'm on the like public free web page mars.nasa.gov and if you click into raw images you can see this like raw feed of this is all of the images that the rover is taking and you know some of them are a little weird some of them are a little like you know you're not sure what you're looking at um, and that's because it's just the kind of a raw feel feed. These are not like processed or anything, and um, they're just they're just up here. So they're really fun to just click around into. Um, so like you can see that here are some of the first images that the rover took on Mars. You know, this is this is a freaking robot on freaking Mars uh, taking pictures. And I know that's you know it's not the first one or anything, but it, it's so cool to see. Um, but you can you can click around in these images. And you know that that by itself is cool. I could just end the video right there and be like, "Yo, go look at these videos or these these images." But the the thing that I want to focus on today is something that I I likely am only like I don't know twenty five percent understanding how it works. But basically, if you look at these images, you might notice that a lot of them they're they're kind of the same. Like this one and this one, it's the same image. Um, but with like different lighting. And if you then uh, download the images, let me download that real quick. Let me download this one quick. And let me see, is there, um, where's its friend? Um, maybe this one is its copy. So like there's like kind of three copies of the image, I think. So let me kind of download that and let me open up my downloads and what you'll sort of notice is that the file names. Um, so this is th this is three images that are roughly the same, both different like levels of lighting. But notice the the file names here. So it's R R R R R G and R R B. And I believe that R R stands for like right rear or rear right. Yeah. So R R is rear right, and then you have RGB, which might sound familiar if you have worked with um, you know visual coding at all before, but it's you know red, green, blue, and I think based on what uh, I'm reading on the internet, um, I think that the way this works is these three images are um, taken with the same camera but with a different filter. So the RRR or uh, rear right red file is the image with a red filter and then G is with the green filter and B is with the blue filter. And the reason this is done is it's a way to get at color photography using grayscale uh, film or likely, I mean definitely in this case, uh, not film but a sensor. And so I, I was trying to read about this earlier and it's apparently, you know, it's a technique in photography where, you know, here's a full color image, here's a grayscale image, and then here's a grayscale image with a red filter. So even though you're not looking at any red here, it changes the, the like amount of light that comes into the, the grayscale uh, image. And so it changes the kind of like the lighting. And you know, this is used in like normal photography. So if you've seen like one of those cool pictures, that's like someone's face and like the, the lines and the freckles and stuff are really well defined. And you're like, how the heck did they take that picture? It could be that they're using a, a color filter with a, with a grayscale um, 
with, with a grayscale picture. Um, but this is apparently also used in, um, in, in like space photography as well. And I guess what it lets you do is um, like you, you get more sensitivity um, because you're not, I, I, I honestly like I don't really know what I'm talking about, but um, I guess you can get more light if you aren't taking like a full color uh, photograph. So I guess it lets you take more sensitive pictures, which is, you know, important if you're a robot on Mars and you don't want to drive into a, a crater or something. Um, but I, I, I was looking at some of these websites and, you know, um, they're, they're kind of interesting in that they, they show you the sort of techniques. So like here's an example of like these colored filters that you might put over a camera and you can then recombine them to create the, like the full, um, the full colored image. And apparently this is indeed how at least one of the cameras on one of the, the rovers worked. And so you can see that here is with the, the camera with the different like filters that it has. So that's kind of, uh, you know, evidence to support the theory. Um, here's like a closer look at what these filters look like. Um, you know, same deal, the closer look. And so the, the idea that I have, and it's not just me, I'm kind of stealing this idea from, from random people on the internet that are <laughs> like guessing at what NASA is doing. Um, is that these images are are exactly that the the filtered versions of the of the image, and so my goal here tonight is to take these three images and combine them and output a colored image. Um, and uh, I should maybe pause here and say that I don't know what percentage of everything that I just said is true. I'm kind of just guessing. I don't really know anything about photography or space or space photography or robots or Mars or, or anything. So um, if you're watching so far and you're like, hey, that's not how it works, you know, please let me know. I'd, I'd actually be really curious uh, to, to learn more. But I figure even if it's not quite true or even if it's like a, a, a an oversimplification of, of what's happening, it's still a fun little coding project that that I can try my hands on. Um, so that's that's kind of the the goal I have here. Um, so the only other thing I'll mention is that so if we look at the pictures that I was that I was looking at um, on the on their web page here, um, so it's like rear right hazard avoidance camera, the has cam. So if you look at what the rover actually looks like, um, those cameras are here and in the back here. So it's the cameras that they use to uh, to like make sure it's not running into anything or like check the wheels, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to kind of connect, connect everything, connect like that random image on the internet to this like actual robot on Mars. Um, anyway, so the only thing I've done is I've kind of gone through and I've downloaded things ahead of time just because the, they're not always in like a, an order that makes sense and so ma matching them together took a, a, a little bit of time and it would not make for a very interesting video so I did that ahead of time but if you're coding along uh, uh, alongside me then all I did is I clicked on each image and I clicked download it's about as it's about all I did um, so I've saved those to my desktop here and I have them in a directory just called M for Mars you know I'm the super creative but I, I renamed them to have shorter names just so that they're easier to work with. But they're the exact same images that I downloaded from the internet. So there's a few images um, that each have three kind of component images. So filtered images, uh, I believe. So that's, that's, that's all I've done ahead of time. I haven't done anything else ahead of time. All right, so I have my images and to get started, um, you know, I, I could think about different ways of doing this. I could do it in P5, maybe, maybe make it interactive or something, but really all I care about is the end image and I might stitch them together at the end or something, but um, because I'm gonna be reading in some files that are on my local system and outputting an image, I think I'm gonna use processing and not, not P5. So let me open up processing here. And let's see. So one thing I'm going to do right away is just kind of drag this directory of images onto my P5 editor and K5 
can't add M. I guess you can't add a directory. Okay, that's cool. Um, whatever, more than one way to do it. So let me let me first of all just get something running. So let me do void setup. Ooh, I haven't done one of these videos in pure processing. I'm going to be rusty. This is kind of fun already. <laughs> I've, I've been doing these videos in P5 and, um, oh man, this is going to be weird. Um, so it's like taking my, my, uh, my brain a second to like think in terms of processing instead of P5. It's funny. Um, anyway, whatever. So let me just get something running and let me just save it somewhere. Mars, maybe. And okay, so now I have my Mars and now guess what? I can just move M over there that way. So that's how I can do it. Um, so data, actually, I think it wants to be in data. So let me put it there, that's fine. So I'll probably refer back to these. So let me just keep this open for now. Um, so I've got my P5 editor and I've got my images in my P5 editor. And what I want to do is kind of read the image data and um, combine them and output another image. So let me see. So let me check a couple things like the size. Are they all the same size? 1280 by 960, 1280 by 960. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Cool. So it's 1280 by 960. Um, my, my, my desktop resolution is smaller than that just to make everything visible on screen. So let me maybe half that um, just for fun. So what was it? 1280. So let me 640 by, I have a terrible memory. What did I say? By 960. What's 960 divided by two? I don't know. I can't do that kind of very difficult math. 960 divided by two. 480 okay so let me do 480 so we'll be working like half half resolution but this is just it doesn't really matter actually um because i'm going to output an image so it doesn't matter but all right i've got i've got something running i've got a it's just a background and it's just a window with a background in it but that's totally fine um okay so i've got the size of the image and actually maybe let me comment this what was it it was 1280 by 960 and one other thing I want to do is maybe I just want to double check a couple things so what if I edit this I'm going to open it up in beautiful Microsoft paint and I'm going to take a sample of a color and then I'm going to go here and yeah okay so what I was checking is that the RGB values are all the same so in this case it's 178 but it's not like this is like a, you know, a colored image that I'm grossly misunderstanding what I'm looking at or anything. It seems to be that it's just a grayscale image. So the R, G and B are all the same. So 44, yeah, okay, that, that holds to be true. Um, cool. So I think what I wanna do next is, mm, 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 mm. I think, so first of all, I think maybe I'm gonna change how I'm thinking about things. I'm not gonna do like set up and draw. I'm just gonna do a straight um, like static thing, static sketch, because there's gonna be no animation or anything like that. So um, just to make it a little bit easier to, to follow. So, all right, I'm gonna stop messing around and it's already been like 20 minutes. So let's just get started. Um, what I wanna do is load my images. So let me do like P image, um, maybe I'll do call, call like R image, so like red image equals, and then I'm gonna do load image and give it a file name. So in this case, it's what m1r.png, I called it. And just to test that everything's working, maybe what I'll do is, um, maybe I'll do image r image zero, zero with height. So I'm gonna draw the image to my screen. I'm not sure if this actually works uh, the way I think it will, but let's find out. And yeah, okay. Oh, uh, so it's, first of all, it's in a directory. So maybe let's do that. Oh, cool. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would load asynchronously or not. It's it, like I said, it's been a while since I've done something in processing. So I'm, I'm kind of learning how it works again. Uh, but all right, this, this works. I'm pretty happy with this. This, uh, this lets me like just confirm that the image is loaded in processing. So that's cool. I think one thing I will do up here is say like int image 
image width equals 1280 int image height equals 960 because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use those in a, in a while. I could probably read them here actually, but whatever. I know they're I know what they are ahead of time, so it's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, this will this will work. And so what I want to do is eh, let me let me load all of my images. I guess so. P image R G image equals load image M M dash one dash G dot PNG. I always kind of forget if it's R G B or B G. I'm pretty sure it's R G B. Yeah. Okay, RGB. So I've got three of my images, and what I want to do is I want to output an image. So I'm going to do like a P graphics here. So P graphics PG equals create graphics uh, with image width and image height. Okay, and I don't know how loud that fan is for y'all, so. Sorry if that's annoying. Um, I just like figured out my microphone settings to make it sound good, and I forgot to check if the fan was going to be too noisy. But eh, hopefully it's fine. Um, anyway, I've got my P graphics now, and what I want to do is loop over the pixels in the three images and output an image um, a pixel in my P graphics. So let's do eh, let's do it up here. Let's do something like this where I do like int y equals zero, y is less than image height, spell it right, in, uh, y plus plus. And then same thing for int x equals zero, x is less than image width, x plus plus. So I'm starting at the top of the image and then I'm working my way down. And then for each row of pixels in the image, I am like going left to right. Um, it doesn't actually really matter. You could have this top loop be X and the bottom loop be Y, but that'd be coming kind of like left to right instead of top down. But it's all personal preference. It doesn't really matter. It's however you think about it in, in your brain. Um, but what I want to do is something like... Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think about this. What I want to do is say float r equals r image dot get x y and that returns a color so what i want to do is get the red type from it and you know if i i'm kind of doing this from memory but if you weren't sure you know like wh where am i getting all these magic functions from um, i'm getting them from the processing reference so go here and find like p image and p image has certain functions that will let you interact with the pixels. So for example, the, the get function is what I'm calling and the get function takes an X and a Y parameter and it returns, um, it's returns well an int, but secretly it's a, it's a color. So you can read more about it here. Uh, so it reads the color of a pixel basically. And that's what I'm relying on. Um, so I want to do the same kind of thing for G and B. Float G equals green of my G image dot get X, Y, and B equals blue, B image dot get X, Y. So I'm getting the, um, the, the red from, from this, this image, the, the dash R image, um, you know, each of the, I, I actually could have done red, green, or blue for any of these. So like if I choose red here and red here, it actually does not matter because like we saw in beautiful Microsoft Paint, all of the, the RGB value for each pixel is the same because it's a grayscale. Uh, but just, just to make it a little bit easier to, to read or to think about, maybe I'll stick with red, green, and blue, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but the idea is that I'm getting the R value from the R image, the G value from the G image, and the B value from the B image. And now I'm going to take those three values and combine them to create a new color, which will hopefully anyway, uh, not be grayscale and will in fact be, you know, a color. 
and I'm I'm kind of optimistic because if I look at these these three images, so R G B, uh, the R image is the brighter the brighter image. So here's R, here's G, and here's B. B is kind of darker, and you know again I'm not a Mars expert, but that kind of makes sense. I, I I'm guessing that that means that the the overall color will be more red, maybe a little yellow, because green's in there, and not really blue at all. Um, like I said, I, I don't know what I'm talking about here, so we'll see if that ends up being true, but that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do. That's, that's why I'm writing this code, um, because I want to combine these three images into one. Anyway, um, what I can do now is, let's see, so I have R, G, and B, and mm, is there like a set? function so let me look at like p graphics so here i am modeling like the the, the process so so like a set uh, why oh, that's, that's annoying why um that is not super interesting maybe it's in p image yeah okay so there's set um so I can call set like that. Okay, okay. Let's let's start. Let's try this. So wait, can I? What's that take? That takes a color. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is something like pg dot set x y and then color of R G B. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This might work. This might not. Um, but what I want to do at the end is, where'd my image call go? Instead of drawing the R image, what I'm going to draw is my P graphics. Let me save this in case uh, my computer crashes because I'm not at all confident that any of this is going to work how I expect it to. So we're looping over the pixels in the image and we're in all three images. We're getting the R, G, and B from the, from the sort of component images. And then we are setting the color of the P graphics and then we're drawing the P graphics. I think there might be a couple other things I have to do to make this work, but let's just run it and see what, see what breaks horribly. Okay, well, not surprisingly, something broke horribly, and it's a null pointer exception with with nothing else. Oh man, that's that's useless. Um, to at least tell me like what line that happened on. Yeah, okay. So it happened on PG dot set, and PG is not null itself, but I think maybe what I have to do is like PG dot. See if like begin draw maybe or like load pixels. It's one of these things. I, I never remember. Let's just try this. I think this actually worked, um, and that's that's uh, that's so cool. That's so cool. So, um, if you compare the output to the input, so let me maybe do like this kind of thing. Um, so the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right. So the left image is you know here's B G R. Maybe I should have named those so they would show up in order, but R G B. These are like the grayscale um, versions of the of the of the image, or the the filtered images. And if I take the R from the R, the G from the G, and the B from the B, and I combine them, then I get I get this, and that is a colored picture of freaking Mars. That is so cool. Um. Yeah, that's that's about man. That's that's about what I wanted to do. So I mean, the only other thing I'll do is like save my P graphics because that was part of my my plan. I, I don't actually care about the processing sketch itself. This processing sketch is like just to get me to my end goal, which was to save an image. So let me do PG dot save, and let me call it like M one dot PNG. So this is like M one, and the output will be also called M one. So let's save that, and. Uh, let's check back in my sketch directory and yeah so m1 is now saved man that's cool that's so cool all right let's try let's try a couple things so i downloaded a few images 
um, downloaded four different sets. So let's try two, two, two down here too. Maybe I should store this in a variable or something, but eh, whatever. Man, that's awesome. So like here's your here's your input, there's your output. And so we're taking three grayscale images and combining them to this uh, this colored image. Man, I'm I'm really happy with this. That's that's pretty cool. Let's try three. It's a really cool one. <laughs> I mean, they're all really cool, but I don't know, man. Seeing seeing like the the red, sort of yellow, sort of brown sands of of Mars. That's 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 awesome. And anyway, one one more. Yeah, it's totally cool. So yeah, it's like, you know, I think you get it by now, but like input output, but here's R, G, B. And so you can see that like, see the R is kind of the brightest one of the bunch. So it's mostly red. Um, it's also pretty green. So it actually kind of has that like yellow tinge to it. And then blue, blue is pretty dark. So you don't see a lot of blues, you know, maybe in the shadows and stuff, but uh, it's you know mostly red and green, which makes kind of red and yellow. Oh man, that's cool. That's so cool. I'm I'm really happy with this. Um, so let's see. So from here, you know, if you're coding along, then um, there are a couple things you could do. One one sort of obvious one is you know I, I picked kind of four images kind of at random. I think these are actually the uh, the first images that they took, that the rover took. So if I, I was reading this on Wikipedia, um, let me find it. So yeah, here, this, this, this thing is the first image that the rover took. And you know, that might look familiar because it's, it's pretty similar to, you know, this guy. Um, so I think that maybe I don't know if this was if the images that I'm working with here are literally the first pictures that it took, but they were among the first for sure. Um, but nothing stopping you from scrolling through the the raw image feed and looking for other uh, images. Um, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of them, and there will be new ones every day. Um, so like this one is probably a pretty cool one. Maybe maybe I'll even try that um, on on camera. Um, but another thing we could play with is, so like I said, I'm kind of making all of this up. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm not straight up lying, but I, I'm sure that I'm grossly oversimplifying things. So I don't know if it's quite accurate to say that these images are like equivalent to a colored image. Like if you went, uh, you know, if you went to Mars and had a little spacesuit and then you took your phone out and you took a picture with a with like a full color uh, camera, I, I think that your images would probably end up looking a little different. And that's because of the the nature of the the sort of filtered effect. And so there is some I don't know some kind of like uh, like it's not super accurate. And so since that's true, you know, maybe we don't need to feel too guilty about um, playing with the, the values a little bit ourselves. Um, so for example, one thing I could do is maybe I'll crank up the red a little bit. And so one thing I could do, and let me think about this. So um, I could like do something like multiply by two here, but eh, that's gonna get a lot of values that are like more than 255. So what I'm actually going to do instead is like, take the average, so red plus 255 divided by two. So this just pulls everything a little closer to 255. And let's kind of see what that looks like. And yeah, I mean, maybe that's like too extreme, um, but you know, the idea is that you have full control over, over the pixels. And so 
you you can play with different effects that way um, so maybe instead of doing that you know maybe we imagine what would what would Mars look like if these were swapped? And so instead of R being R and B being B, maybe I'll switch them, swatch them, switch them, swap them, swatch them. <laughs> uh, so try something like this. And so, you know, this is a different, different kind of planet. Maybe that would be, I don't know, Neptune. Neptune's blue, right? Although Neptune is just like ice and water, I think. So maybe that wouldn't be what Neptune looks like, but the idea is, you know, you can play with it. So you can see there's quite a difference between the, the sort of more realistic colors and the sort of blue shaded colors. But, you know, you can play with it. It's kind of up to you. Uh, but I kind of like the, I like the, at least pretending that I'm trying to go for accuracy, even though I'm sure there's a bunch of very complicated math about um, robots and colors and photography and transmitting data that makes this more complicated than I'm making it uh, out to be for myself. But I don't know, man, I really like the idea of uh, taking some raw images that a, a robot on Mars took and taking those images and, and combining them using processing, using 30 lines of code to come up with something that, you know, colorizes it. That, that's, that's pretty sweet to me. Uh, anyway, um, so let me just real quick check how long we've been going. This is like behind the scenes, but I'm gonna open up OBS real quick. And where are we at? About a half an hour, okay, okay. So maybe I'll do one more image and just to kind of show you the, the full process. Um, the other thing I might do, but I'll do this probably off camera is take like, combine these into like a single before and after thing. But really all I'm gonna do is like use Microsoft Paint and like paste these into Paint and paste the, the after beneath it. So it's probably not super interesting. But let's go back here, let's look at this one. What is this one? Um, so I'm gonna hit download a couple times and you know, this this may or may not work. I have no idea. I haven't I haven't tried this at all. I, I in fact, I haven't even looked at this picture before before right now. But let's just see what uh, what it ends up um, looking like. Like, what are those? What's its file name first of all? So is it similar? Whoops. So those are the ones I downloaded before. I can get rid of those. So yeah, we've got R, G, and B. So R, G, B. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's a similar idea. I'm not sure which camera this is. Actually, they tell us, right? So I can see that this is uh, the right navigation camera. So that is this, wait, this one. <laughs> it's this, this, this camera right here. Um, so, I mean, that's totally awesome. Like looking at this, this robot, you can see here's the camera, here's the image from that camera, and now let's Let's combine them and, and see what comes what comes out of it. So let me move these over into my handy M directory. And then what do I want to do? I want to go over here and I want to say like M5, what was that? That's the G1. M5B. I'm, I'm only renaming them to make it easier to work with in, in processing, but I, there's nothing stopping me from like hitting copy here and like going over into processing and, and using that file name in here, but it's just super long and um, you know, I, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with it, but that's why I'm doing this. Um, M5R. So now I've got my M5, R, G, and B pictures or image files and I think what I can do, let me first double check that um, I don't have anything goofy happening. Yeah, okay. So all I, all I need to do is change this to five. And again, maybe that should have been a um, like a variable name or something, but whatever. So let's just see, let's see what happens. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Man, that is awesome. And this makes me feel a little bit uh, more confident about like the the accuracy of the colors because like you see this like gold like wire thing you see these kind of like 
I don't know, you see white and gray like where you'd expect to, to, to see them. And so it's not like I'm doing something like way off at least. Maybe the, the balances could use uh, some tinkering, but man, this is cool. This is so cool. Try not to swear again. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, yet again, let's just take a look at, you know, your before and after. So here's here's the you know the the individual filtered version of the image and so that's b so if i look at like r g b um yeah here's here's actually a good good way to talk about the like color components so like see this like i don't know this this curve in this wire or whatever this thing is this hose uh, i guess it's probably a wire um see how bright it is with R. And then if I go to G, it's quite, quite a bit darker. And if I go to B, it's basically black. Um, so if I look at the, the output image, you know, this is like pretty red, kind of gold, maybe, maybe orange, um, because it's mostly red, kind of green and not blue at all. Um, is there anything blue on here? Is there anything that's brighter in blue? And it doesn't look like it. I'm sure there's probably something, but um, man, I'm, I'm really tempted to like go through here and find find an image that would um, that would have more blue. I don't know what this thing is. That one looks cool. Um, but anyway, I mean, if you're coding along, then that's that's something that you can play with. You know, scroll through here and find find an image that looks interesting to you. Um, I don't want this video to be much longer, but um, you know, a lot of these look really, really tempting. So, you know, maybe maybe you send this one through the through the filter by downloading it and sending it through the sort of algorithm that we've written. But yeah, okay, I think that's about where I'm going to end the video. Let me see if there's anything else that that I can think of that needs to change so eh, not really so another thing you could play with is the idea of sort of like animation or or interactive uh like an interactive component so i i've written this basically as a like a script that runs and outputs something and really the thing that it outputs is the is the cool part but you could do something like um like create a sketch that shows the input in some interesting way and then the output in some interesting way. Like yeah, I've seen like you can like move your mouse and everything on the left is before and everything on the right is after, you know, maybe you do something like that or you just kind of flash them, you know, you go RGB and then you go to the output, you know, something like that, that could, that could be a cool like interactive uh, uh, sketch. But for me, I think I'm going to, kind of focus on the, the image output. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to stop rambling. I will say that if you do find this code interesting, and I'll, I'll post a link to the code uh, in the description of this video, uh, but if you do find it interesting, or if you come up with something, or if you send other images through, like, please let me know. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Um, either, you know, put a comment down in the down in the comment section of this video or better yet come to happycoding.io this is this is my little website this is where i live and uh, you know especially come to the forum and please make a post saying hey I, here's what i did with your code i would absolutely love to hear from you um even if it's like here's a cool image i found that i put through the the code and and look look what it looks like um i, I absolutely love stuff like that so don't be a stranger um, but this is about as far as I was planning on taking it. So I think I'm going to sign off. Um, but yeah, I just want to, again, just say how cool it is that there's a, a Mars, a, a robot on Mars, and all of the images are available for free. You can, I think you can do pretty much whatever you want with them. I'm not sure if they're like, I'm not sure what the copyright on these is, but uh, whatever. Um, they're available for people to play with and to, um, to do their own sort of like examination and, and science, sciencey stuff uh, on. My sciencey stuff tends to be uh, not very scientific at all, but uh, in the end, this looks really cool and I'm really happy with it. So um, 
yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and, you know, have a great night. And as always, happy coding.